Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger. In this lecture, we'll discuss the theory that dinosaurs were endotherms. Endotherm is defined as organisms that regulate their temperatures internally. We humans carefully regulate our temperature to around 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, 37 degrees Celsius. If it deviates from this, it means that we are sick or hypothermic and we can quickly die. Ectotherm is defined as organisms that use external sources of heat to regulate their body temperatures. These animals often have a body temperature that can vary and adjust to the conditions that the animal lives in. For example, lizards can have body temperatures that vary from 11 degrees on a cold winter night to 46.4 degrees Celsius on a very hot midsummer day in the desert. Ectothermic animals often can have both hotter and colder body temperatures than endotherms. So the term hot-blooded or cold-blooded is not necessarily the best term to use. We can define two other useful terms, Pochiliotherm, which means that the animals have a large range of temperature tolerances, and homeotherm, which are animals that have a very narrow range of temperature tolerances. Most endotherms are also homeotherms, and most ectoderms are pochiliotherms. Although some ectotherms that live in very stable climates may be homeotherms with a very narrow range of temperature tolerances, while some endotherms can be pochiliotherms if they hibernate in the winter and they lower their body temperature seasonally. There are advantages to being an ectotherm as well as being an endotherm. Ectotherms have the advantage of not having to burn so much energy to heat the body, so they can eat less food. However, they do have a more limited temperature range of places that they can live, and they have trouble with very cold climates when the temperature goes below freezing. The advantage of endotherms is that they don't have to heat up their body using the environment and are much more active all the time. While they require more food to regulate their body temperature, they can move around and quickly escape predation or actively hunt for food. Now there's been a lot of debate on when endotherms arose, as both living mammals and birds are endotherms, and there has been discussion of whether dinosaurs were endothermic or ectothermic as crocodiles are ectotherms and birds are endotherms. So the phylogenetic bracket does not work here. Somewhere in the evolution of dinosaurs, they evolved the endotherm condition. There is a growing body of indirect evidence that dinosaurs were endotherms. Much of this research came about during the 1980s from the work of Robert Bacher and his mentor John Alstrom at Yale University. Let's look at the evidence for and against endothermic dinosaurs. First, ratios of predator and prey in dinosaur faunas show that prey outnumber the number of predators. In ectodermic faunas, the ratio is much closer to one to one because the predators don't need to feed as often. The second evidence is the occurrence of dinosaurs near the poles, where they were likely exposed to cooler or colder temperatures. Now the climate during the Mesozoic era was mild and there's no strong evidence for ice sheets or glaciers, but Mesozoic dinosaurs don't show much geographic limitations like modern ectothermic animals. The third evidence is found in the erect posture and avian style of respiration. Both lines of evidence for very active lifestyles found in endotherms. And fourth, the growing number of dinosaurs that appear to have some type of integumentary structure found in small dinosaurs, resembling fluffy downy feathers suggesting an increased need for insulation in small dinosaurs, which have higher surface 
to body size ratios and a greater need for insulation if their body temperatures are regulated internally. A fifth line of evidence comes from the histology of fossilized bone. Dinosaur bones are unique in that they exhibit Haversen bone with an abundance of canals for arteries and veins, as well as lines of arrested growth that can be used for determining growth rates. Growth rates in dinosaurs were very fast, similar to modern bird growth rates. And these two lines of histological evidence have been used to support that dinosaurs were endotherms. And finally, new research using oxygen and carbon isotopes as proxies for temperature in bones of dinosaurs appears to show that the body temperatures were fairly uniform and close to body temperatures found in birds and mammals. Now there's lots of evidence for endothermic dinosaurs, but there's also some evidence to the contrary. First is that dinosaurs lack turbinate bones in the nasal passage. Now turbinate bones are thin bones that help to keep warm air inside the skull during breathing. There are also lots of turbinate bones found in modern mammals as well as in birds, but they're absent in dinosaurs. The second evidence for ectothermic dinosaurs is the tiny size of dinosaur brains. The endocephalization quotient is the ratio between body size and brain size. Dinosaurs have tiny brains in comparison to their body size, which is similar to ectothermic animals like crocodiles, reptiles, and amphibians. The correlation between ectothermic animals and small brain size might be spurious, and brain size might have increased over time as we see the large brain dinosaurs are the Dromaeosauridae, which are the most closely related dinosaurs to birds. In summary, there is evidence both for and against endothermic dinosaurs, and it may be that various groups of dinosaurs regulated their body temperatures in different ways, like modern animals. Further study of the body temperatures of both living and extinct animals showcases a complexity of adaptations to the regulation of body temperature. All right, you should be able to describe the indirect evidence for endothermic dinosaurs and some of the evidence to the contrary. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjamin slash burger.org. Links are found in the description below.